video is for educational purposes only YouTube. Welcome to CLTV. My name is Rob and this is an episode of Blunt Brothers. Now, traditionally, we do have longer full featured episodes, but I'm going to break this one down into smaller pieces. Well, for one, because Trey didn't have a whole lot to say in the entire episode. Two, we had Shane from Migro on, and he did get in-depth on some lighting tech and some current trends that we're going to dive into. In the first part of the series, we're going to be talking about inner canopy lighting or under canopy lighting, and is the hype worth it? But before we do that, quick shout out to the brands who help support this channel and make content like this free for you. AC Infinity. One of the leaders in the game when it comes to grow equipment. Whether it be lighting, ventilation, or a whole entire grow kit, AC Infinity's got your back. Use discount code CLTV at checkout ACINFINITY.COM or CLTVAC10 on Amazon. And also Seedsman. If you're looking for some dank genetics, Seedsman's got your back. Use discount code CLTV at checkout to save on your order. Back blood brothers, Robert Train. We got a guest today, Shane from Migro. Ours. Hey man, how are you? <laughs> Pretty good, man. Appreciate you taking the time to hop on here, man. Last oh, time I saw you man. was in Vegas, actually, a year ago, two years ago. Now, it was yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, you spiked me. So thanks very much for that. Oh yeah, man. Uh, yeah, for first blunt in twenty years was an honor in my. Yeah, I yeah. That, <laughs> that was great. I remember. I remember leaving you guys on that podcast and going back to um, my hotel in Vegas and had a. I had a wonderful Uber ride through the city. I can tell you, it was very nice. <laughs> I slept well that night. Perfect, man. I'm glad that I could help with that. <laughs> So you're kind of chopping it up right before this a little. And it's something I've been seeing on social media like crazy, man. I want to talk a little bit about like the future of lighting in 2025 lighting. But one thing right away I want to jump into because I'm personally interested is this inner canopy or under canopy lighting. It seems to be the trend. It seems to be what a lot of commercial growers are using, which does make sense. But I'm hearing home growers should be using this. What is your take on, on this type of lighting? You think it's worthy looking into? Yeah, so like, you know, it, it's been around for many, many years. Um, people have been using uh, under or intra canopy lighting, uh, for example, growing tomatoes, you know, they grow them those those vertical walls in, in um, greenhouses and they've been dropping LED lights down in amongst the canopies and those for decades now. Um, and, you know, they only do something if it's got a good return, you know, this is business people. So, you know, it's it's known to work. Uh, when it comes to cannabis, um, there hasn't been as much of it recent up, up until recently, I think. Uh, and Fluence have actually released um, some really interesting studies, pretty wide ranging studies. And they've been demonstrating, in short, that uh, you can have a certain amount of wattage per square meter or per square foot or whatever. Um, and what they've been testing is, does it make a difference if you have all of that as just a top light above or whether you mix that up? So maybe have two thirds, one third of top lighting and intra canopy lighting. And they found that in side by sides over multiple tests and at multiple different strains that you can get basically the same in and around the same yield. But there are some small sort of benefits as well, particularly for the commercial growers in that it increases the bag quality, basically. So the I think they call them A, B and C um, buds and C being the lowest sort of larky stuff that ends up going to, you know, mostly to extraction and that sort of thing. Uh, so they're lower value. So you can get some of those lower value buds up the chain up to be grade B or, or, or grade A you probably will get the same yield with inter canopy lighting it doesn't vary very much uh, adding those extra watts but um 
you sorry you get proportionately the same increase in yield and adding intercanopy watts underneath uh, but you get better quality buds marginally so i can't remember exactly the numbers but it's somewhere maybe 10 or 15 percent of those uh, lower quality ones will be bumped up into higher quality ones um but what they did find as well is that you know there's a limit to the amount of light that you'll get a benefit from so you, you keep increasing up to around 75 watts per square foot and um you get a you get an increase in yield um up to that point but you add any more than that and the yield kind of tapers off so you're, you're you're spending more money on lighting equipment and energy but you're not getting a great return for it um but that you can get up to quite high now so you know commercial growers will be growing at as i said at, at that higher rate so say in a four by four for example and they would be lighting that with about 750 watts at the moment getting about 1400 micromoles of power and um you know whereas the home grower will be probably at about 500 watts and what that means is and this is what i find interesting about it is if you've got a four by four and you've got a 500 watt light in it if you're happy with the yield that's great if you've done all the things that you can do to sort of maximize the yield from that that's great but if you want to get more it is possible and you don't have to throw away your perfectly good 500 watt light uh, you could ju just add maybe another 250 watts in intracanopy and um, you know you could be lighting that from above you could be lighting it from the side you, you could even add those intracanopy lights and just hang them and drop them shining from above as well you know um, it doesn't really matter where you put them and I think that's kind of cool you know it's kind of cool flexibility to have um, and uh, yeah if not why not you know yeah, I mean, you look at it in that sense, I feel in a commercial grow, Trey and I ran into this heavily ourselves. We're smoke, we're heavy smokers and we're home growers. So we'll smoke these smalls and they smoke just like the A-Buds. Yeah, who cares? But, but, but when you're going in the commercial market, you actually have to sell based on that price point. It's got to be the A-Buds, B-Buds or smalls, they'll call it. And oftentimes the masses of people want the best price they can have. So they're going to take these smalls. So it seems like there almost often is a market still in the uh the low-end consumer who still wants quality to buy these smalls but at the same time when you're looking at your annual roi you almost have to factor in can you sell those a and b buds and is it worth increasing your electrical consumption in the initial investment i had a guy arguing with me that 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 i know nothing of what i'm talking about and i'm totally ignorant uh see guy knows his stuff but it's because he's thinking at a massive scale of course and i'm like listen i'm talking about on my small grow tents even on a, a four by eight grow tent. If I was still in the caregiver market and it made sense for me to do to liquidate it, I would do this, but I'm just smoking my product. And I know that the smaller ones kind of do smoke the same for me as long as they're mature. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's not the bag appeal. I think this type of lighting is gonna be a focus for the commercial grows. Honestly, I'm kind of blown away that there wasn't more of a trend of UV lighting being added in for home growers. I, I bought your, your UV light years ago and I thought that was going to be the next trend. And it seems like now people are like, no, just buy another thousand dollar light that has some UV added into the light itself instead of supplementing. And now yeah. it's getting under canopy lights to supplement. Yeah, but you know, this is another way of looking at it too. So say, for example, you're growing in your bedroom and you want to grow three plants. That's enough for you and your partner or whatever the hell, you know. Um, and previously, you might have had to have... Uh, four foot by four foot tent or a three by three tent, quite a big tent in your living room or your bedroom. And now you can drop a size, you know, and you can drop a size, put in a little bit more lighting. It can be a little bit more neat, more contact. Um, like if we were still doing things the same as we were doing 20 years ago, um, you know, we'd be wasting a lot of money, we'd be wasting a lot of energy, we'd be, you know, people who are just getting these little incremental improvements all the time. And one of them, I think, is just getting more more wattage per square foot in terms of the intensity of light, and then just getting more yield per square foot. And it means, hey, you've either got more yield or you can do it in a smaller space, you know? It's the other way of looking at it. I think there's a lot of people who are smaller scale nowadays than back in the day 
But even back in the day, you would see supplemental lighting probably in the most inefficient way. I knew quite a few home growers who would uh, put T5s or fluorescents on their walls, you know, which would would ultimately add more light, which your plant's going to benefit from. But as far as what is usable light was probably missed in the times in which we were talking about. Um, but I can see where if you are in four by four, five by five, that's all the space that you can dedicate. And, you you know, you, you come to, you know, this channel or another channel, another resource for information as to how can I produce more out of my space per harvest to, you know, get a little bit more stretch. I think this offers, um, you know, an option for those people or an answer or solution potentially. Well, I think without buying a light too, another big light getting the supplemental lighting is a smaller increase in your your initial investment but then you look at the wattage of that like like shane was saying now in the next part of this series we're going to be talking about some of the hurdles these light companies are dealing with and some of the consistent things that we're seeing within the market some of them may surprise you with that being said my name is rob from cltv big thanks to shane for coming on the channel having a great discussion and big thank you to you for watching this entire video stay lifted peace